everybody. Today we're doing fork seals on the old uh, 300 EXC KTM. This would be a 2000 vintage, which if you stop and think about that, you guys remember Y2K? Like, what were the Austrians doing making dirt bikes when the world was gonna end? Remember all that power grid stuff? No, not that old? Okay. Well, let's get into getting these forks off and fixing them. Step number one, or at least what I like to do first is, is I like to loosen the bolts on the top triple clamp and then I loosen the cap up while it's still on the bike. You know, while it's steer, because that holds this. And then you can just get on this and turn it with a wrench. Now let's get down here and let's, oh man, look at that. Who has a giant out wrench that size? Well, if you ride these bikes with these upside down forks, you probably have one. If you don't, you should get one. But this is the first time fixing your, you know, leaky fork seals. And by the way, if any of you know how to put fork seals in and then they don't leak right away the first season, let me know in the comments. Anyway, if you don't have a giant Allen wrench to get your axle nut off, just go down to the hardware store and get a metric bolt and a metric nut that fits in here like this. And then you just take it off with a wrench. That'll get you going for the first go around. But go ahead and order you one. Order a giant Allen wrench so when you need to take that out, you can do it. I'll take the bolts out of this. We're going to take the axle nut out, of course loosen these on both sides. Take the axle out, pull your fork guards off, loosen those clamps, and then we'll take this over to the bench and get after it. I got this in the vise. And if you forgot to loosen this cap while it was still in the triple clamp, take it back and put it in the triple cap and loosen the top. Because I got this clamped in the vise and I just got a rag in here to protect the finish. If you clamp this down hard enough to take this loose, if it's stuck, you probably ruined this part. So just be gentle with this. This is just holding it for me. It's not really tight, tight. Now the first thing is you got to get this off. I know, it's, there's a lot. Eventually you'll get there. Alright, we made it. I'm just lifting this up and out. It takes a 21 wrench. And there's a piece of plastic in here, like a spacer, with a notch in it. And that's all they give you to get this sucker apart. So when you go back together, don't like crank down on this super tight. Because it might not come apart again. Anyway, then you just take the other wrench that you took the cap loose with and now be careful when this starts getting close to the end of the threads. Your spring and whatever your fork has for spacers in there might just disappear on you. Oh, God. Or you might just drop the whole works back in the fork tube. Well, what's happening now is instead of this fork cap coming loose, this threaded spacer that's plastic is screwing down on the damper rod. So you got to turn this enough to bottom it out. And on the damper rod, and hopefully that stops it enough we can get this cap loose. There it comes. It comes back. Just getting a little worried there for a minute. Alright, we got a washer and a couple of plastic spacers. Yeah, that's the adjuster. Now, careful when you pull your wrench out because everything could go flying. You're going to have a spring that comes out. And then, if you reach down under your vise and just lift the bottom of the fork up, you can get a hold of this damper rod. Inside of it's a adjuster that goes down to the bottom. So you don't want to lose any of these pieces. Now, this is actually, this is good. I'll explain more about how to put this back together because if you don't have this right, when you put it back together, 
and you go to click your adjuster in for compression, it'll unscrew and fall down inside the fork tube. So watch till the end, at least till we put this back together and I'll show you what to do. Now, the other fork I've already had apart and the oil was nice and clean. So that means somebody's just recently been in here and put fork seals in because you know, they leak every time you ride the bike. It's just a given. So we're not gonna take it all the way apart. We've got it enough now that when we pull the we pull the dust seal or the wiper and the seal out, we can we can get it apart enough to put new seals in. We're not gonna worry about we're not gonna worry about taking it all the way apart and cleaning everything because the other one looks pretty clean. So I'll show you what to do next. Hang on a second. Just Tip this thing upside down and let the oil out. Grab the damper rod and go back and forth with it. That'll get as much oil out as you can. Now the wiper on this is like pretty stuck. This is one of the toughest ones I've had to get in work on. Actually, I had to take a hammer and just kind of give her a few soft taps. Make sure you're not hitting any of the fork tube. Make sure you're just hitting that rubber wiper. If you bring her up the end of your fork tube, <laughs> you might have seals that leak on the outside instead of the inside. Alright, so now we got that out. Now, there's a snap ring in here you got to get out. This is one of the more ornery ones I've worked on. I don't know if you can see it down in there. No, camera's not going to cooperate. Anyway, we got to get that pried out now. That's a, see they put a little cut in there so you can get a screwdriver in there. Luckily, if they hadn't done that, you'd be digging on that forever. But now that we got this out, now this will come apart. You just, you watch them. That's all there is to it. Now keep in mind, when you go back together, you got, you got wiper, seal, Bushing and bushing. The way you get this off, you just take a screwdriver, get in there in the gap. Be careful not to nick it. Just open it up and pull it right off of there. Pull the other bushing off, washer goes on. Seal. Wiper. Now, I've got the special seal bullet. When I did the other fork tube, the actual wiper fit so tight that there was no way it was going over this, not on the fork tube. So, I had to use the plastic bag trick. This here is what the plastic bag trick looks like. Just pull the plastic bag over this. Remember, the wiper goes on first. Oh, and by the way, you should oil the lips of these. You don't want to put them on dry. Anyway, you just, the plastic, and that's enough protection from this sharp edge here where the bushing goes to keep you from wrecking your seal and your wiper, hopefully. So there's the wiper. Now we'll do the seal. Don't worry, I got oil all over my hands. The lips of this will be just as wet as can be. Anyway, there. Be careful. Don't hook the lips of that seal on that sharp stuff. And if you have to use the bag method, you definitely want to make sure you get all the bag out from under the lips of the seal. 
not that it matters because I mean every time you ride one of these upside down fork bikes you got to put fork seals anyway so washer bushing other bushing yep that's trust me it's clean enough now you just go right on back together you want to make sure that bushing goes in now we'll take the outside bushing this washer hold this mess up take your fork seal driver just gonna hear it that sound it's bottomed out now we're just gonna go up and down yep she's not bound up now we can drive the seal in Yes, it probably is. If you're in doubt, you can look in there and make sure you can see the snap ring too. Most of these have what you'd call more of a curl clip, but this thing is actually more like a snap ring in my mind. You want to be sure that your snap ring bottoms in its groove because this is the only thing that holds your fork tubes together. So if you was to put this together and leave that snap ring out or curl clip, you want to go over a big jump or hit a big bump, do a wheelie, <laughs> your fork slide out of the tubes. That'd ruin your day real quick, I'm guessing. Sound bottom to them. The funny thing is, is uh, the owner's manual for KTM actually says to pry these wipers out and clean up inside of there. I don't think the Japanese stuff recommends that, but that comes out so hard that, well, I don't know. That'd be a half day's job in itself. Anyway, let's go back to the vise and we'll show you the trick to make getting that spring and stuff. It's a pretty good trick. Got the fork tube back in the vise, and I got the bottom of the fork tube in the vise. So, you now we can get a hold of this guy. Because we got that up there, then you can't, you can't get a hold of that. So we're just going to dump fork oil in here, and we're going to fill her pretty much all the way up. And then what you do is you just this is your this is what makes it a shock absorber. You see that how it just took off it was there there you just go up and down with this until you get steady resistance from the top all the way to hear the air until you get steady resistance all the way up and then that's bled at that point and you continue and then you can continue assembly right there at the bottom they always kind of hang up but it also means sometimes it's time for more fork oil so. Yep, that made all the difference. Yeah, don't be stingy with the fork oil when you're doing this. It seems like if you keep it all the way full, nearly to the top, it, this damper rod will bleed a lot faster. I'm there. Um, it's bled. Now, some of these forks, just about all of them really, that aren't dual cartridge, where you have to measure the oil or where we're going for an oil level, once you get this far, you want to just do that, and then that takes any oil that was trapped between the fork body and the tube body and dumps it in where the oil goes. Then, now we'll set the oil level. We're going to set the oil level, and uh, if you go down to the farm store, like Tractor Supply, you can just get an animal syringe. 
And for this fork, I think it was like six inches, whatever that is in millimeters, down from the top. So what you do is you get a syringe, a small piece of hose that fits it, measure from here whatever you want your oil level to be, and then you just stick this in here. Whoop. And then you just stick this in here and suck the oil back out of here. Of course, you can go on the internet and buy a tool from some place that sells motorcycle suspension stuff, but you know, this is always last minute because every time you go to go for a ride, you gotta replace your fork seals, right? Because they always leak. So. All right, now we're going together. I'm gonna grab the damper rod and keep a hold of it. Get this out of the way. Open the ice up enough I can drag in here so we don't beat the fork tube up or scratch it. Now that we got it here, if you know, if this gets away from us again, we can just grab down here and let the fork up and grab it. So, if you haven't done this already, I'm going to lift this up, hold this tight, and screw this plastic spacer down as far as it will go. The reason you want to do that is, is it will automatically set you up if your threads aren't damaged to bottom this out. You want this to bottom out inside the cap so when you turn your adjuster, you do not lose the adjuster. If this isn't bottomed out, this will just unscrew right into the fork tube and you know who knows when you go to back it back out if it's going to cross thread to do what it's supposed to do or... so i'm just going to screw this on here loosely and make sure it seems like it's going to go as far as we want it to yep that that feels like it's bottoming a nice thunk so we can continue to go together with this all right so the adjuster goes in or just your rod. And then we want to get the spring on here. Now here's the trick. You might be thinking, well how do I get, you know, because the damper rod just gets away from you. So get this damper rod up as far as it'll go. Drop the spring down. Catch it. And then you want to get your wrench on the flats. And then you just screw this down. See what's happening there? Look at that. So how about that? Now, our washer. Plastic spacers. And cap. We'll go right on with no trouble. Now these have a little a little piece that sticks out that you want to make sure you get inside of that damper rod. We're just going to screw that on. That feels good and tight, bottomed out. We'll take our other wrench. Now, you probably can't see, but what's actually happening is this black plastic spacer that this wrench is holding is turning on these threads and it's going to come up and meet the cap. Any second now. And I'm not gonna super tighten that because you know I'm gonna have to take it apart again. Now I let this out of the device, lift this up, make sure this doesn't cross thread, and screw it back together. That's how you put new seals in your WP forks. Okay, we got the forks back in the triple clamps. Some things just to look out for that'll save you some grief. When you tighten the triple clamps, actually use a torque wrench and torque it for what the manufacturer says and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until they both tighten up because you know it has to work its way in there. The other thing a lot of people don't look out for is these right here. They're like a wear thing, and when your fork guards hit them, they wear on these little rings that are replaceable instead of wearing your fork tube out. 
One last thing is make sure to try when you put your forks in the triple clamp, if you want to run them flush like this, that slightly extends the front end out, which makes the bike want to go straighter. These generally have marks on them, and this is no exception. It had two. You can come up one mark, or you can come up two marks, and then your fork tube's slightly above the cl clamp here. That'll make the bike want to lay over and turn a little easier. So just something to think about if you've got a bike that doesn't feel like it turns good, try raising your forks up, if you're in there anyway. I think that's it. Oh, one last thing. You can go ahead and tighten your triple clamps and your brake caliber and everything, but leave the hardware loose for the front axle. Go ahead and tighten the nut for the axle and the bolt. Tighten the bolt up, but leave your clamps loose and end your fork tubes. And then just get your bike off the stand, grab a handful of front brake, and bounce the suspension. That should kind of seat everything in and make sure when you do tighten those clamp bolts up, it won't be bound up. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your forks.